last legendary lawman, Judge Dredd, for a comment. No criminal escapes the law. I am the law. Welcome back to the Wildcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming trial of Tina Peters. Uh, Tina Peters is one of the most prominent state-level election deniers regarding the 2020 election. She's holding that Donald Trump is the actual winner, and there are some shenanigans involving Dominion and other voting companies that led to Biden winning. But you still didn't answer my question. Where is your evidence? So um, she has been charged. She was charged along with her ex-deputy, Belinda Kingsley, who has pleaded guilty, by the way. Uh, as you guys can see over here, she was her and her deputy were arrested back early in 2022, charged on a 13 count indictment, which I'm going to show you guys right now. The latest news, however, is that her last and final outstanding deputy has turned against her and turned state's evidence. OK, and this person is right here. Um, Sandra Brown has uh, admitted her part in this uh, conspiracy uh, that that Tina Brown had. Basically, she's been accused of letting outsiders breach the uh, the electoral system and stealing um, election data. Right. Data breach. She's charged with a data breach, being involved in a data breach. And also she's been charged with official misconduct and uh, trying to pressure um, election officials to uh, do things regarding the election that they didn't want to do. Uh, so we're going to go through all the charges. I'm going to show you guys the charges, the specific charges. Um, but this is the last person that the state needed in order to make a solid case against her. So her trial is not going to go well for her. Tina Peters wants to go down fighting. So she is being prosecuted by uh, a prosecutor from the 21st Judicial District in Colorado. And uh, she has refused to take a plea deal as she's pleaded not guilty, which means they have to go to trial. So you don't trust the FBI? Um, I don't really trust much in the government. Okay. That comes out of the government. Do you trust anonymous sources on 4chan? The trial is coming up, I believe, in early February, and uh, it's not looking good for her. So like I said, she's one of the most prominent state level election deniers. She's not a national figure, so most people might not know her, but people in Colorado certainly know her and all the election deniers certainly know her. So the latest news, indicted Colorado County clerks, deputy agrees to testify against the 2020 election denying boss in a voting machine data breach trial. Um, so like I said, she's being prosecuted by the uh, prosecutor here, Dan Rubenstein from the 21st Judicial District. And I'll give you guys some quotes from uh, him in a second. But first, I want to take a look at her indictment. So this was filed against her and Belinda uh, Kingsley back in, back on March 8th of 2022. That's earlier this year. She was arrested and jailed. And then she made bail, of course. Some of these uh, charges are just against Belinda. Others are against both Tina and Belinda. Um, and then others are just against Tina. So as you guys can see, so there's a variation here, but they're, they've both been charged with similar things. So there are 13 counts overall. And uh, I believe uh, Tina herself has been charged with 10 of them. Belinda is no longer relevant because she's pleaded guilty. So she's not really relevant here. But these are the charges that she was facing. Attempt to influence a public servant in violation of Colorado Code 18-8306. Uh, I'm not going to read the, the exact codes here, but you guys can see it. Um, three charges on that. I think four charges, actually. The fourth charge, conspiracy to commit criminal impersonation. Uh, that's for both of them conspiracy to commit criminal impersonation, criminal impersonation, cause liability, identity theft, uh, first degree official misconduct, violation of duty as her role as the uh, county clerk, failure to comply with the requirements of secretary of state, violation of duty, um, failure to comply. So yeah, both of them have char been charged with charged individually and together with similar crimes having to do with election violations. In narrative form, I'm going to explain to you guys what exactly did they do. So we're going to be going through the summary of the relevant facts here, which has been laid out. Uh, by the prosecutor. So let's get started. During the relevant time frame from April uh, to August of 2021, Tina Peters was the clerk and recorder in Mesa County, Grand Junction, Colorado. Belinda Kingsley was the deputy clerk and recorder. She was second in command. Sandra Brown, then a key employee who has now pleaded guilty and is cooperating, was the back office election manager who had access to voting system computers and equipment as part of the state of Colorado's initial criminal investigation. 
investigation was it was learned that in early August of 2021, public servants with the Colorado Secretary of State's office, SOS, became aware that a series of confidential digital images of Mesa County Dominion voting systems, equipment and related passwords had been published on the Internet. The uh, public dissemination of this sensitive information constituted a, an unauthorized data breach. That was the information that was published on Tele Telegram on a QAnon account, uh, claiming to have found proof of Dominion fraud. Of course, even that data showed that there was no fraud, that the election was uh, administered properly. The compromised sensitive data included images depicting a proprietary hard drive with unlawfully downloaded image software from Mesa County's election management ser uh, server's hard drive. Additionally, unique basic input, basic output, or BIOS, confidential passwords, uh, passwords necessary to conduct a trusted build system upgrade were also distributed in violation of SOS rules. A trusted build is an in-person upgrade of an election management software that supports a county's voting system. Voting system equipment operate on a closed network. This means that voting system is not connected to the Internet. OK, so this is a fact. They're closed networks. They're not connected to the Internet. This is the most key factor. So this idea that any of these systems could have been hacked by the Chinese government is ridiculous. OK, don't be ridiculous. The Mesa County trusted build occurred on the 25th and 26th of May 2021. Personnel associated with any trusted build in Colorado include representatives from the SOS, experts from DVS, and a few designated county election staff personnel who are des designated to uh, and undergo a background check in advance of the trusted build. So these are people who are supposed to make sure that the systems were working correctly and they had access uh, to this trusted build exercise. Beginning in April, uh, April of 2021 and in advance of May 25th and 26th of 2021, trusted build, Tina Peters and Belinda Kingsley, either as principal actors and or acting as complicators, devised and executed a, uh, a deceptive scheme which was designed to influence public servants, breach security protocols, exceed uh, permissible access to voting equipment, and set in motion the uh, eventual distribution of confidential information to unauthorized people. Furthermore, these defendants, without permission or lawful authorization, also use the name and personal identifying information of Jerry Wood or Gerald Wood to further their criminal scheme. This unlawful use of Mr. Wood's identity by Tina Peters and Belinda Kingsley also subjected Mr. Wood to various forms of liability and criminal exposure. So that's the identity theft part. OK, uh, the next section here outlines the laws, the applicable laws and rules by which these things are uh, judged, meaning defining terms uh, and their criminal liability. OK, because all these words in a, in a court of law, the meaning of words matter very much because it's all about uh, because our system is all about technicalities, the meaning of words and how they're interpreted matters a lot. So it, it, there are entire sections of the legal code that define words so that everybody knows what the words mean. So we can't play around with the meaning of the words because lawyers, defense attorneys, especially try to do that crap where they try to, you know, come up with ways how the words don't really mean what they mean. This is, oh, this is one thing that lawyers are mocked for, but people who don't study the law don't know that there are actual definitions in the code built, written into the code. So you can't play around with words. Okay. And that's what this is all about. So let's get to what uh, the deputy did here. With less than two months before trial, a Colorado county clerk accused of voter machine related breach in the service of the 2020 election denial suffered another legal setback. Her ex deputy agreed to testify against her. They're talking about Tina Peters. That deputy, Sandra Brown, entered into a cooperation deal with the government against her ex boss, Tina Peters, a former Mesa county clerk and a failed candidate for secretary of state. So Tina Peters actually tried to run for secretary of state. Thankfully, she lost, uh, partly because the fact that she was arrested uh, for being a criminal. This was an important step in the prosecution of Miss Peters. District Attorney Dan Rubenstein from the Colorado's 21st Judicial District told Law and Crime, Miss Brown is taking responsibility for her actions and will face appropriate consequences for her role. She has also agreed to testify truthfully about what she did and what she witnessed during the relevant time periods of the of the acts that Miss Peters, Tina Peters, was indicted for. 
At this point, all of Ms. Peter's charged co-defendants have agreed to cooperate in her prosecution and testify against her at her upcoming criminal trial and any other proceedings in both state and federal court where they may be needed, Rubenstein went on to say. Her campaign was interrupted by a 13-count indictment against her and Belinda Neasley. It's actually not Kinsley, it's Neasley. I've been mispronouncing her name. Apologies for that. Can't be helped. Um... 13 count indictment against Tina Peters and Belinda Neasley, another ex deputy who subsequently pleaded guilty. The 10 uh, charge indictment against her accuses her of three counts of attempting to influence a public servant, two counts of conspiracy to commit criminal impersonation, and one count each of identity theft, uh, official misconduct in the first degree, violation of duty, and failure to comply with the Secretary of State. Though she still holds her county clerk position, Peters lost her primary election for statewide office. So if you're wondering why she's still in office, because being charged with a crime is not the uh, final step. You have to be convicted of a crime. After you're convicted, then you will be removed from office. But because of constitutional issues and the current law, somebody cannot be removed from office just based on allegations and charges. They have to be convicted of a crime for them to not be able to hold office. So that's why she's still, she still holds her county clerk position because she was elected to it. Okay, so you can't remove elected people based on allegations. You have to convict them. So after she's been convicted, if she is convicted, the trial still has to happen. If she's convicted, then she'll be removed from her position and go to jail. I believe she's facing at least up to five years, probably more. Uh, some of these are misdemeanors. Some of these are felonies. So I haven't looked at exactly what the years are, but we have to wait until trial. After she's convicted, I'll tell you guys how long she's facing. But uh, but right now we're jumping forward. If we're talking about sentencing, she hasn't even been convicted convicted yet so we'll hold off on prison time or jail time until she's actually convicted okay so last thing here i want to give you guys a couple of quotes from sandra brown the person who's turned against tina peters during a recent hearing brown said the following brown reportedly insisted that she initially did not know that she falsely told the colorado secretary of state that a man named gerald wood would attend a sensitive election software update in may of 2021 prosecutors say that uh, peters planned to have an election conspiracy theorist named conan hayes pose as wood so this is the identity theft stuff where they had this conan hayes guy impersonate gerald wood and and brown facilitated this uh this criminal action and that's why she's uh she's also facing potential criminal charges but she has now come to testify against uh, tina peters and she, therefore brown will get a favorable plea deal quote at the time i sent the email i did not know that the person i was referring to as an employee was not an employee brown said at her plea hearing she went on to say but i found out later and I did not bring it forward. I need to take responsibility for my actions or lack thereof. Peters allegedly helped the unauthorized third party make copies of voting machine hardware uh, before and after the trusted build systems upgrade. Trusted build systems upgrade. As a result of the breach, confidential voting machine logins and forensic images of their hard drives were published on a QAnon affiliated Telegram channel last year. Brown reportedly expressed regret for not fulfilling her duty to protect elections. Quote, my job was to protect the integrity of the elections. Uh, there were steps that I could have taken. There were things going on that I should have questioned and I didn't. So after reading the pleaded facts here, it's very clear that this Sandra Brown woman was the least culpable of the three. Uh, Tina Peters being the ringleader here is the most criminally liable. And uh, Kinsley or Neasley, uh, Belinda Neasley here, she was she's much more culpable than Sandra because she was closer to Tina Tina Peters. Um, but nevertheless, I'm glad that Sandra Brown is uh, doing her legal obligation and her obligation as a citizen and turning uh, state's evidence against Tina Peters. OK, so we'll see how the trial goes, given the pleaded facts, given the evidence and the people that they have testifying against her. Tina Peters is going to have a very bad time at trial. She'll probably be uh, convicted of uh, most of the charges that are uh, that are charged against her. Most of the counts, the criminal charges against her, she'll be found guilty on most of those, at least uh, the criminal impersonation and the uh, official misconduct and refusing to do her, do her duty as the clerk. She she's clearly guilty on all of those things. But we have to wait until 
you know, the jury hears the case. And uh, this is going to be a state level jury, superior court, um, uh, because this is a state level trial, not a federal one. So but she might be charged with federal crimes as well. I believe she was subpoenaed by the Justice Department in D.C. to uh, provide evidence regarding her actions during this time. So she may be prosecuted federally as well. Um, after the state prosecution, but we'll have to see on that. Um, I'll be doing an update if other important things happen related to this. I'll be following this case and I'll be paying attention to the trial as it goes forward. And uh, I'll be reporting back for you guys. All right, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There's a link down below. You can also join channel memberships on YouTube by clicking the blue join button, which is easily accessible down below. Thank you so much for the support. See you guys next time. Peace.